everybody. Welcome to the Order of Operations lesson today with me, Brian. I can't wait to get started. Let's go. Hey everybody, welcome to Order of Operations on the T's with me, Brian. So we are going to jump right into our lesson. So let's see what we're going to cover, what our goals are for today. So our goals, we will be able to solve expressions with multiple steps using order of operations, and we're going to justify the use of order of operations. So you're going to be able to solve multi-step equations, look at expressions, and you're going to be able to tell people why you are using the order of operations and why they matter. All right, key vocabulary one, order of operations. It's a set of rules to determine which order you should calculate pieces of an expression. This is going to be super, super helpful. Later on, I will show you why we use the order of operations, so hold on to that idea for just a moment. Two, if we have an expression that is a collection of numbers and symbols that show a math problem without an equal sign. So in here, 3y plus 8 would be considered an expression because it doesn't have an equal sign is not equal to anything, and expressions often are also known as an infinite amount of possibilities. Why? Well, for that variable, we can put any number in and solve. So we have an infinite amount of answers to this problem if we were to solve it. In this case, no one's telling us what y is, so we can just leave this as an expression. Three is an equation and a collection of numbers that show a math problem using an equal sign. One thing is in case you get lost later to know the difference between expression and equation, notice the prefixes match one another so an equation has an equal sign. So in this case we do have 6x plus 3 equals 27. It is solvable so we're going to subtract 3 from both sides. 6x equals 24 divide both sides by 6, and in this case, x has one value of 4. So in this case, x does equal 4, noticing the difference between an expression and an equation. 4, we have exponents, which stands for repeated multiplication. So if we have 2 cubed, because this is to the third power, or 2 to the third power, it really means 2 times 2 times 2. The most common mistake that if you go too quickly you may make is you may think of this as 2 times 3. That's not the case. Multiplication is repeated addition. For exponents, that's what we call repeated multiplication. So 2 cubed means we're multiplying 2 together 3 times. So that is going to equal 2 times 2 is 4 times 2 is 8. So in this case it is 8. How does this work when we have a variable? We're going to have x squared we have x times x, so in this case, it is the same thing as x squared. You don't know what x is worth, but know that if you are solving and you're given an x value, this is what it means. It does not mean x times 2, it's x times x. A little crowded here, but we do have our order of operations. What we follow, and we follow it going down, First, we deal with parentheses. That comes first. So if you see anything in parentheses, that's what you deal with. Next, you have exponents, just like what we're on the last side. So if you see anything that is squared or cubed or to any power, that's what you're going to use. The next, this is where a lot of us start to mess up. It's multiplication or division, but it's whichever comes first, left to right. So if you are reading this like you'd be reading a book, and division comes before multiplication, in that case, division comes first. Then we end with addition or subtraction. And again, this is whichever comes first, left to right. So if subtraction comes before addition, that's what we're going to do first. So we use this by, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally or Sarah or whatever name you want to call it, but if you can create a way to help you remember the order of operations, it is going to make it really easy for you. I know when I taught it, we did call it PEMDAS, just as an easy way to remember it, because this way, if you need help with order of operations, as soon as you start a problem, you sit down, 
you write this out. You make sure you group multiplication and division together along with addition and subtraction, and then you get your work together. So whatever way helps you to remember because there is so many parts of the math that you are working through, the easier you can make your life, the better it goes. So without the PEMDAS or order of operations, there could be multiple answers to the same problem. And that makes things very confusing. We want to have a universal language with math that says no matter what happens, this is what we do first. So in the first example, we're going to go, I'm going to just label this as wrong. I want us to know that this is wrong from the beginning. If we have 12 minus 2 times 3, if we just did the whole thing left to right and did 10, 12 minus 2, which is 10 times 3, it would tell us that our answer is 30. I'm telling you now, again, wrong. So we're not going to follow this. The correct answer, so it's right and on the right side, is to do, in this case, order of operations, tell us that multiplication and division come before addition and subtraction. So this would be what we do first. So 2 times 3 is 6. 12 minus 6 equals 6. Now I can almost guarantee you that when you take your assessment, both of these options are going to be multiple choice options, if it's a multiple choice question. Why? Because I do the same thing later on, where I give you answers that you might actually see. Why? Because it's important for you to actually understand the order of operations. And the only way that you can actually know if you understand them is to put answers from common mistakes. So I know you'll see this. Be very careful. So make sure you follow those order of operations. Key point number three, track your work after each step. This is something that I like to do even teaching math for 11 years, I still tracked every part of my steps. Why? Because I don't want to make silly mistakes just because I didn't pay attention to what I was doing. So if we were going to do order of operations, and if I just put this right here, we notice there's no parentheses, there's no exponents, so we do multiplication or division first. So I would do 6 times 9, which is 54. Oh, wow minus 7 times 3. Again, this is where I go to next. 7 times 3 is 21 because multiplication comes before subtraction. 54 minus 21, 4 minus 1 is 3, 5 minus 2 is 3. My answer is 33. So notice that the reason I did this is because I wanted to make sure I included all of my numbers. Another common mistake is that we miss pieces, we change it, we change signs. So really looking to make sure that you're bringing everything down with you. Don't overcomplicate it. It is time for us to jump into some sample questions. As always, you can pause the video, try it on your own, and then see if your answer is correct. Or if you need to see a few more examples, watch a few and then try the next few. It is totally up to you what you do. But as long as you're understanding what is happening, why it's happening, and you know how to get the right answer. All right. so. Our sample question, number one, we have 8 minus 5 plus 6 minus 4. We have the order of operations over here on the side in case we need to see it, and I will talk you down the line. So first, we do not see any parentheses, I do not see any exponents, and I do not see any multiplication or division. So that leaves us with just addition and subtraction, with our rule being whatever comes first left to right. In this case, 8 minus 5 comes first. So going to do 8 minus 5 is 3, plus 6, minus 4. 3 plus 6, because now we're still going left to right, because it is all addition and subtraction. 3 plus 6 is 9, minus 4 equals 5. Let's look at sample question 2. We have 15 divided by 5 times 6 divided by 9. Again, we have written out our order of operations on the side, color-coded for you to see the order or what gets grouped together. So again, we have no parentheses, no exponents, but we do have multiplication and division. So that's where we're going to focus. Again, multiplication or division, whichever comes first, left to right. So we are going to start all the way at the left with 15 divided by 5, which is 3 times 6 divided by 9. 
So now, same thing, left to right, we do have multiplication. So three times six is 18, divided by nine is equal to two. So once we had 18 divided by nine, it was the only step left, 18 divided by nine is two, we are good to go. We didn't even have to worry about addition and subtraction since it was not involved in this problem. Sample question three, we have four times six minus eight divided by four. So let's work ourselves through order of operations. No parentheses, no exponents, so we focus on multiplication and division, whichever comes first, left to right. So we have four times six, which is 24, minus eight divided by four. Now some of you might have said in this moment, why didn't we also do eight divided by four? That is fine if you understand that you can do that. But what I'm gonna show you is going just down the line to make sure we all understand what happens left to right. So if you understand order of operations, totally good to go. All right, so now we look, we still have multiplication and division. We've not left that step. So then we have to do eight divided by four first, which is two. We have 24 minus two equals 22. Sample question number four, you can see things start to get a little bit spicy. So we have parentheses eight plus seven divided by three minus one times four. Let's work through our order of operations. We do have parentheses this time, so this is going to be our step one. We see eight plus seven in parentheses, so even though it is an addition problem, it goes before everything else because it has those parentheses around them. So eight plus seven is 15. We can now drop the parentheses because once you only have one number inside and you have nothing attached to it on the outside, like no other number just directly in front, we can drop the parentheses. And you'll see more of something outside parentheses when we get to algebra, where we put in numbers for expressions or we are solving equations. All right, so now we have 15 divided by three minus one times four, no more parentheses. We do not have exponents. So we focus first on multiplication and division, left to right. So in this case, we do have 15 divided by three, which is five minus one times four. We see that the front is subtraction, but we still look for multiplication and division. In this case, we do have multiplication here. One times four is four. So we're left with five minus four. Multiplication and division are over. We have one thing left to do. So we just get it done. And our answer is one. Sample question number five. And you can see that we now have something else joining the mix. So. Again, let's go down order of operations. There are no parentheses, but in this case, there are exponents. So that is where we're going to start. So when we have this, six squared really means six times six. And this little dot here also means multiplication. We get in the habit of writing that dot instead of an X because when we get to algebra, it's very confusing when you have an X that looks like it's a variable and an X that looks like it's for multiplication and knowing which is which. So we have six times six, which is then 36. So we have seven plus 36 minus five. No more exponents, no more multiplication or division, and we just have addition and subtraction, whichever comes first, left to right. So we have seven plus 36, which is 43, minus five is going to be 30. Eight is our final answer here. And this is our final sample question for this lesson. So let's tackle it. There's a lot of pieces here. It can be pretty complicated. So let's walk ourselves through. We first look for parentheses. So we do have those here. And in fact, we have two sets. This is where I'm gonna show you. You have two sets of parentheses. You know they both have to get done first. So what you can do is do both of them if you if you want to. You could also do them separately and still walk down the steps, but this five times four would have been the second step anyway, which we know is 20. So now we go back to the other pieces. This 10, if I drop the parentheses, I'm still gonna put the squared next to it. If you also like to see it like this, it means the same thing. It just means 10 squared. So, we have 10 squared divided by 20. We now have exponents. That's what we go to next. So this really means 10 times 10. 10 times 10 we know is equal to 100. 
So we really have 100 divided by 20. No more exponents. We have one thing left, one equation left. So it's 100 divided by 20 equals 5. And 5 is our final answer. All right, it is your turn. We have come to the end of our order of operations lesson. Remember, this one is going to impact a lot of future lessons that you work on. The order of operations does not sit in isolation just in this lesson alone. So make sure you understand the order of operations, you figured out a way to remember the order of operations, and you understand why we do the order of operations. Knowing those things are going to remind you why you have to use them later on and to make sure that you get the correct answer. All right, well, I can't wait to see you for the next lesson, so see you soon. Y'all, that was wild, but congratulations on crushing another lesson here at Nurse Hub. You should be proud and then continue working to make sure you fully understand everything that you just watched. Remember, practice is the only thing that we need to make ourselves better at all of these topics. Good luck, and I hope to see you soon.